no limits. No limits. You know, there are certain things that we have limits on. I'm glad there are speed limits, amen? Especially in certain areas. You know, uh, there's uh, the speed limit of uh, 25 miles an hour uh, or 35, uh, most uh, here in town, especially in Eau Claire, uh, most of the speed limits is around 35 or so. And uh, of course, you get on the interstate, it's 70 miles per hour. And, and uh, at one time, there were, uh, there were no speed limits in Montana. Um, I remember uh, the first time I was uh, driving through there and I had a, a semi truck and, and there was absolutely no limit. And I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. And uh, I remember getting that uh, semi up, uh, probably, I, I won't uh, tell you how fast I had it, but let's just say it pegged out at 120, all right? And uh, then we'll just leave it at that, all right? Now there are uh, there is a speed speed limit in Montana. I just uh, looked it up this morning. As a matter of fact, uh, they they have a speed limit of 80 miles an hour. They were having too many accidents uh, because of of speed, and so they they said uh, let's uh, reduce that at least and, and cause there to be a speed limit. And, and so there's a there used to be a, a daytime and a nighttime speed limit. There is still for semi trucks, however, for vehicles for cars, there's just one speed limit, 80 miles an hour, day or night, there in Montana. There are limits sometimes even to what you can buy at a grocery store. You know, uh, you go to something, uh, you know, some sale, they'll, they'll say, hey, buy two, get one free, limit, and they'll tell you how many uh, you're limited to. There are credit card limits. You know, uh, some of you maybe have a, uh, a credit card limit of 10000 or maybe uh, 20000 or 50000 or whatever it may be. Each and every person, though, uh, has different kinds of limits. Uh, some are limited to even here today uh, on what they can lift or carry. I know there's some that are, are uh, limited on even able to, being able to wash dishes, amen? And, and some are limited on what they uh, are able to, uh, uh, you know, see. And, and some are limited in, in their uh, mental capacity. Some are limited by their strength or lack thereof. And, and uh, some are limited in what they can hear. Some have selective hearing, amen? But, but some are limited on what they can hear. And, and uh, they have to have be hearing aids and and so don't turn me way down all right just uh, leave it up there and, and uh, so you can hear me and then but you know with God God has no limits God has no limits as to what he can do he spoke this world into existence he was able to form man from the dust of the earth his power has kept this world in its place his power of the winds, the waves, the weather, the list goes on and on. He has power. His hands, the Bible tells us, spans the heavens. That's pretty big. That's pretty limitless. But you know there are times in our life when we limit the Holy Spirit. We limit what he can do in us and what he can do in through us. The children of Israel had limited God in many different ways. They had done things in their life where God wanted to bring them into the promised land and they limited what God could do because they didn't believe that God would be able to bring them into the promised land. And because of that, I want to point out a few things. We're going to look at some of these uh, things and how they apply to you and I here today and how we can have a uh, allow God to have no limits in our life. First of all, we're going to look at some ways that they limited the Holy Spirit and how that applies to us. First of all, number one, they did not trust Him for salvation. They did not trust Him for salvation. We're not, we're not going to read because of time. We don't have time to read all the chapter here, but I'm going to point out a few verses here. Of course, verse number 22. I want you to notice there, uh, Psalm chapter number 78, verse 22. It says, Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. There are times in a Christian's life when people don't trust God to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Of course, there are those who will, will trust something or someone else for salvation, maybe to get them into heaven. They, they believe that you know maybe good works will get them into heaven. Of course, we know that that's a false uh, trust and 
And uh, the Bible tells us that there is no other name given among uh, uh, men where must, whereby we must be saved. We know that from the book of Acts in chapter number 4. Turn there very quickly with me, if you will. Acts in chapter number 4. And notice in verse number 12. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name uh, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way of salvation into heaven. Jesus uh, is the only one that can give you salvation. You know, it says in John chapter number 14 and verse number 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the only way for salvation. If you're here today and you've never heard that before, I'm here to declare to you that Jesus can give you salvation today if you'll trust Him today. Amen. Amen. He is the only way. It's not uh, the Baptist way. It's not some other religion way. Uh, Jesus has a monopoly on the way. But then, as a Christian, we also need to know that Christ is the only way of salvation from our enemy, the devil. You yourself cannot get yourself out of your problems. Amen? Amen. You, you uh, will uh, surely uh, cause more problems by trying to get yourself out of your problems. You have to get to the point where you rely uh, upon the Lord and trust Him to get you out. I like the verse in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 57. It says, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? It's through Him. We were talking about this during the Sunday school hour. It's through the Holy Spirit that we, uh, you know, conviction is brought into our heart and our life. And, and the Holy Spirit is the one that tells us, hey, this is right. Hey, this is wrong. And hey, you need to do right. And hey, you need to uh, stay away from sin. Amen? But you know, even David, he recognized this type of salvation as a young man. He realized he had to rely upon the Lord. Even it mentions it in, in first, uh, I think it's First Kings or First, uh, uh, I think it's First Kings chapter 17, if I remember correctly. Uh, he uh, is talking to Saul, and, and he mentions that, hey, the Lord, it, it was the Lord that uh, enabled me to to have victory over this bear and to have victory over this lion, and, and it, he always gave God the victory for, it, or God gave God the, the glory for that victory in his life. But you know, have you trusted the Lord to help you out of your sin? you got to trust Him. You know, they, the children of Israel, they did not trust Him for their salvation. Oh, number one, they did not trust Him for salvation. Number, number two, they refused to walk in His law. They refused to walk in His law. Notice back in our text there in verse number seven. Psalm chapter number uh, 78. I'm sorry, verse number uh, 10. I think I told you verse 7. Verse number 10 it says, They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. And refused to walk in his law. God had given them very clear instructions. Amen. You know, I hear people many times say, Boy, I wish there was an instruction book uh, for life. Guess what? Yeah. It's here. Amen. It's right here. You have to open it up and, and read it and make it a part of your life. Amen? That's the way you learn from the instructions. You know, uh, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person, I'm that geek that will sit down and read all the instructions before I try to work on anything. Amen? Why? I want to know what it says. There might be something I'm missing. Amen? Uh, just recently here, I was doing something. I forget what it was. And, and somebody uh, said, well, this is how you put it together. I said, did you read the instructions? Amen. So I went back to the instructions and realized, look, this wasn't put together right. Amen. But you know, sometimes we limit the work of the Holy Spirit on us when we neglect God's Word. Sometimes God is trying to speak to us, and by the way, this is how He speaks to us. Some Christians will neglect His Word and miss out what God's trying to say. There are those that sometimes just refuse to walk with the Lord as they know they ought to. There's some Christians that know, hey, I ought to be in the Word of God. Hey, I ought to be in the house of God. Hey, I, I know I need to, to uh, talk with my Heavenly Father, but, but they just refuse to do that which they know is right to do. Sometimes they're like the children of Israel. 
they know what was right to do and they would follow the Lord for some time and then you change, change, turn the page and, and then it says, well, they, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You think, boy, would, would they forget about God and forget about his blessings and forget about all that he did for them before? Yeah, I think sometimes people do. Notice in verse number 8 of uh, Psalm chapter number 78. <clears throat> It says, it might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. And I think sometimes, you know, it, you hear in their scripture there, the children of Israel, they, they were rebellious at times. They were rebellious as to what the Lord would have them to do. I think of the time that the Lord had told them, hey, I'm going to bring you into the promised land. Just go in and search the land and, and see it. And, and of course, they, uh, they send the 12 spies in. Remember that? One spy from each uh, of the tribes. And, and they go in and, and they spy out the land. And boy, there's a, uh, you know, a, a, the land is uh, flowing with milk and honey. Boy, when I used to read that, I'd think uh, there was rivers of milk and you know, waterfalls of honey. And then they just go over there. Wow, that's good honey. And then just dripping off of everything. Uh, but it's, it's, it was talking about it was a very prosperous land. You know, if it's a prosperous land, I, I'd want to be there, amen? As to the alternative, the alternative which was a wilderness, amen? But you know, those tw uh, 10 of those 12 spies, they came back and said, oh, we're not able to go in. There's some giants in the land, and we were in our own sight as grass grasshoppers. Now they had some stinking thinking, Amen? They missed out on what God could do in their life and through their life. They missed out. They limited what God could do. Why? Well, they were still looking at the, the people of the land rather than God that was bringing them into the land, and they were, they were rebellious about it. And they said, well, we're just not going to go man, Lord. You, you, you can try to lead us, but we're not going to go. You know, there are Christians that are like that. They know what God's trying to do in their heart and in their life, but they refuse. They have a rebellious heart. I'm not going to do it. No! You ever seen uh, you know, parents, you don't have uh, rebellious children. I, you know, I'm talking to uh, the choir here, amen. And uh, your children are perfect, amen. But my children, for some reason, amen, my children sometimes get the, no. Uh, go do this. No. Uh, wait, what? What did you just tell me? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> oh, your, your children are like mine, I guess. Amen? They get to tell them, I'm telling you no. And you know, oh, what is, wait a second here. Amen? We're going to take care of this. Amen? <laughs> Do you know, sometimes we are like, just like our children. God tells us to do something. God is trying to speak to our heart about something, and we become rebellious. We say, no. God says, hey, I want you to go forward during the invitation time. Make this right. You know what we do? Oh, we're not rebellious outwardly. We don't say, no, God, I'm not going to do that. But we'll say this. I'll do it later. Amen? I'll do it. I'll take care of it later. And God is trying to speak to a heart and trying to get us to obey Him. But many times we rebel against Him. And, and uh, God shows us in His Word and what, we, uh, uh, what He would have uh, us to do. Whether we rebel out of fear or out of, out of our own stupidity, God says that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Though. Sometimes God just says, hey, just obey, just trust. We're going to see that here in just a moment. Oh, they refused, though, to walk in his law. Number one, they did not trust him for salvation. Number two, they refused to walk in his law. Number three, they did not believe him. They did not believe him. Notice back in our text in verse number 32. It says, For all this they sin still, and believe not for his wondrous works. And believe not for his wondrous works. You know, they limited God because of their unbelief. 
there's a lot of times I think that we limit God because of, well, I don't believe that God can do this. I don't believe that God can do the impossible. Amen. Look with me, if you will, at Matthew chapter number 13. Matthew chapter number 13. And notice with me in verse number 58. Matthew chapter number 13 and verse number 58. Notice the last verse of this chapter. And it says there, and he, uh, talking about Jesus, and he did not many mighty works there because of their what? Unbelief. Because of their unbelief. You know there are times that I think Christians limit what God can do because they just don't believe that God is able to do something. You know, some have limited God and that they don't really believe God's word when it says we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 33, amen. Some Christians, though, their focus is on the wrong thing. Their focus is on money or whatever it may be and, and your focus needs to be on Christ and believe him. So, some don't believe that God uh, will provide when he says he'll provide for you. I know Christians that will trust God. They can't see Him, all right? They'll trust God for their salvation. They'll say, Lord, I, 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 please, I, I, you know, come into my heart and save my soul. Amen? Then all of a sudden, when it comes to everything else in their life, well, I can't trust God for that. I can't trust God, you know, if I'm going to tie, I, I can't trust God to provide for me. i got to provide for me. I can't trust God to, you know, if I'm to give to missions, I can't trust God to, for me to, to give to missions and Him provide for me. I, I just can't trust God for that. Amen? Wait, this is, we're talking about this unlimited God. Amen? We sometimes sing the song, He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You're like, yeah, Lord, sell one of them, send the money my way. Amen? But, wait a second, we... We are to trust Him and believe Him. Lord, I'm going to trust You. I'm going to give this to You. I'm going to give uh, uh, faithfully my tithe, cheerfully. And I'm going to trust You to provide everything else. Do you know there are some that are unwilling to give, uh, let God prove Himself to them? If you look at Malachi chapter number 3, I'm not going to read all of it there. And, and uh, verses about 8 through 10 talks about prove you now, you know, proving God, allowing God to prove himself to you and I. That he'll pour out the blessings, amen, of heaven. That there will not be room enough to, to hold it, to contain it. Do you know some don't believe that God can help them have victory, though, even in their life, no matter what it is. They don't believe God. You know, I, I've seen where Christians say, well, you know, I'm just going to keep uh, going into the sin. I'm just going to keep uh, doing what I'm always doing because there's just no way I can have the victory. Don't you believe God? Don't you believe His Word? Amen? I believe His Word. I believe it's true. Oh, but some Christians limit God because of their unbelief. Oh, they did not believe Him. Number one, they did not trust Him for salvation. Number two, they refused to walk in His law. Number three, they did not believe Him. Number four, their heart was not right with Him. Their heart was not right with Him. Notice in verse number 37. Psalm chapter number 78, verse number 37. For their heart was not right with Him, neither were they steadfast in His covenant. You know, children of Israel limited God in, what, uh, in that they provided lip service. They were very good at saying, Oh, Lord, you are our God. They said they wanted to be right with God, but their heart said differently. Notice in verse number 33 and, and uh, leading up to verse 37. It says, Therefore their, uh, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, that they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God, and they remembered that God was their rock and, and the high God, uh, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. Oh, he's our God. We want to follow him. Yet their, excuse me, their life showed differently. You know, there are some that have shipwrecked in life. 
Look with me, if you will, at 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. And notice with me verse number 19. First Timothy chapter number one, verse number nineteen. It says, "Holding faith, holding faith, and a good conscience, which uh, some have put, uh, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck." You know, there's some Christians that they've kind of made it a mess of their life. Why? Because their heart was not right with them. Their heart was not right with the Lord. <laughs> and sometimes we limit even God in answering our prayers when our heart is not right with them. Psalm chapter number 66 and verse number 18 says, The Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you have sin in your heart and in your life, you wonder why you, you feel like your, uh, your, your prayers are just kind of bouncing off the ceiling. Sometimes you need to take a, a medical, not a medical, a spiritual checkup. Amen. It's like you do a medical checkup. You go to the doctor and say, Doc, there's something wrong. Amen. Some of you need to go before the Lord, our heavenly physician. Amen. Say, Lord, is there something wrong in my heart that needs to be changed? Sometimes we, sometimes we limit God and work in our lives when our heart's not right with Him, though. So, uh, what is on your heart, by the way, will soon come out. Proverbs chapter number 4, verse number 23 talks about that. If it's filled with bitterness, it'll come out. If you have a critical spirit, it will come out. If your heart is not right with the Lord, it will show in your life. All their heart was not right with him. Number one, they did not trust him for salvation. Number two, they refused to walk in his law. Number three, they did not believe him. Number four, their heart was not right with him. Number five, they turned aside. They turned aside. Notice back in our text, Psalm chapter number 78. Notice in verse number 56 and following. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Or they uh, provide, uh, provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. You know, some in our text here, the, some of the uh, children of Israel had allowed things to come between them and God. The focus was no longer on God, but rather on other things, other little g gods. You know, there are some Christians that have limited God because they've been turned aside to other little g gods. Some, it's because of the world. They've been turned aside to the world. Some uh, uh, care more about the things in this world than they do about the things of God. Some have turned aside because they're no longer on fire for God. Uh, they were once doing something for the Lord and once uh, doing the will of the Lord, once faithful in service, once faithful to the house of God, once uh, uh, were following and obeying the Lord and now have limited God by turning aside. A lot of people that are like that in this world. Some will be turned aside by the pie in the sky, convinced that there's something better out there for them. Oh, the children of Israel had turned aside. So number one, they did not trust him for salvation. Number two, they refused to walk in his law. Number three, they did not believe him. Number four, their heart was not right with them. Number five, they turned aside. Number six, and lastly, how do you have no limits? How do you allow God to have no limits in your life? I want you to notice some things here in, uh, back here in our text in Psalms chapter, chapter number 78. Notice Psalm chapter number 78, verse number 38 and 39. It says, But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh. The wind that passeth away cometh not again. Then skip down to verse number 52 but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the board of his sanctuary, even to, his, uh, to this mountain, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided them an inheritance 
excuse me, thy line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. And then uh, skip down to verse number 65. Then the Lord awaked awake as one out of sleep, and, and like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine. In verse number 72. Notice there, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. So how can we have no limits as to what God can do in our life? Number one, let God awaken your heart out of the sleep of sin. I want you to notice in Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number 13. That's what had to happen here with the children of Israel. They had to be awoken to where, where they were at spiritually. Romans chapter number 13, and notice in verse number 11. It says, And that now in the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. There's a lot of Christians that are asleep spiritually. A lot of Christians that have just kind of, uh, their, their senses spiritually have been dulled <coughs> to things around them. They are no longer sensitive to the Holy Spirit. They're no longer sensitive to the unsaved. They're no longer sensitive to sin. They become kind of accustomed to it. But you need to allow God to awaken, you, awaken your heart out of that sleep of sin. And then you need to walk in His law. Look back at our text, Psalm chapter number 78. Notice what he said there, verse number 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. You know, you need to walk in the law. Be, let, let the word of God be your meditation all the day long. Read it, follow it, heed it. And then believe it, though. Amen? Not just, not just reading it, but, but believe it. Then get your heart right with God. Get a have a clean conscience before Him. You know, I like I like what uh, uh, Paul said. Uh, turn it with me, if you will. Uh, so Acts chapter number twenty-four. Acts chapter number twenty-four. Acts chapter number twenty-four. Notice with me, verse number sixteen. Acts chapter number twenty-four. And verse number sixteen. Paul said this here, and herein do, verse number 16, Psalm, or Acts chapter number 24, verse 16, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. You know, you and I ought to do our best to have a clean conscience before the Lord. That talks about when we confess our sins, He's faithful and just what? To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm so glad that we have a God that will forgive, Amen. And He, uh, he uh, the Bible tells us He removes uh, our sin as far as the east is from the west. Could you imagine space? How big it is? As far as the east in space. Is to the west. Amen? It's a long ways, isn't it? The Bible talks about how God removes us, uh, our iniquities from us and, and buries them in the depths of the sea. Micah chapter number 7. Amen? You know, there's some places in, in, uh, uh, in the oceans where you and I cannot go to. Aren't you glad for that? Why? Because that's where God buries those, those sins at. Amen? When we take them to Him, He buries them there. But then, we need to get our eyes off of ourselves and onto the Lord. Look at Hebrews chapter number 12. We'll close with this. Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. And notice what he says there in verse number 2. Looking unto who? looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame that is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I like that song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Full in his wonderful face. You have to turn your eyes to Jesus. You want to have little limits? 
that God awakened your heart out of the sleep of sin. Walk in his law. Get your heart right with God and turn your eyes upon Jesus. So what are you doing today that is limiting the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? What is it that is limiting the Holy Spirit to work through you into the lives of others? Have you limited God in, in your uh, soul salvation? Maybe, maybe you, you haven't even trusted God as, as, and trusted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Have you limited God in your walk with Him? Have you limited God in having victory over sin? Have you limited God because of your unbelief? Have you limited God because you have unconfessed sin? Have you limited God because your heart is not right with Him? Have you limited God because you have turned aside? Oh, God desires to use you without any limits. Won't you come to Him today so that the ways He can use you will be limitless? So there will be no limits. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's looking around. I'm going to ask a couple of quick questions. We'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk with him. Come and talk with the Lord. Maybe here today, and you'd say, Pastor, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my or home. Pastor, in this free prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone like that here today? Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. Yes, thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. The other question is this, then. Say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. But I realize there's things in my life I've allowed, maybe, maybe that you've harbored or whatever it may be, that you realize that it's limiting what God can do in your life and through your life. You've limited the Holy Spirit. God spoke to your heart about that here today. You say, Pastor, would you pray for me? God, God spoke to my heart. I, I realize there's some things I've done in my life, but I'm limited, limiting the Holy Spirit. Pastor, pray for me. Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, hands all over this auditorium. Thank you. So from down. I see this one back over there. This one up here. This one over here. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? Yes, I see that one. I realize I've limited what God can do in my heart. Pastor, would you pray for me? Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. Yes, I see that one as well. That one in the back. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. God's word in my heart. Would you pray for me? In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk to the Lord. I'm going to do business with him. If you're not sure of your soul salvation, I would invite you to come. Say, Pastor, I'd like to know how to be saved. We'll have somebody take the word of God and show you from God's word how you can know for sure where you'll spend eternity. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking of hearts. Pray now that you bless this invitation time, Lord, that you'll be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.